Welcome back. We're looking at jobs in America. The United States has lost 1.9 million manufacturing jobs in the last decade, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But Bassett has been providing factory jobs to its people in its Virginia factories since its founding in 1902, priding itself on the affordable and high-quality home furnishings for over a decade, uh, a century, rather, over a century. Yes. Joining me right now is Vaughn Bassett, chairman, and Making It in America author, John Bassett III. John, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. What a proud story, 100-plus years for your company. How did you do it? Well, my grandfather started the Bassett Industries in 1902, uh, and he had a wonderful gentleman that worked for him that left in 1919 and started Vaughn Bassett. So we've been around 100 years with one company, 97 years with another company. We're just American born, American bred, and we believe in this country. How do you think a person who's starting out today can have the same kind of success that you did? What do you need today to really make it in America? Number one, you better be get ready to work hard. I mean, we're in a global economy, guys, so nobody's going to cut you any slack. But don't underestimate the power of the American worker. It's the most efficient worker in the world. We should never lose confidence in the people who work with us. Yep. But uh, what your story is fascinating, John, though, because the, ori the, the original Bassett, you set out and started running Vaughn Bassett. That's right. The original Bassett closed factories in Bassett, Virginia. You went down the road to Galax and kept manufacturing furniture, and you took on China with the biggest anti dumping <laughs> lawsuit and won. Man, you are. We don't Trump, use Trump, the word. Trump, Trump. We don't use the word one. We prevail. That's a nice. <laughs> word. That's a, I'm not you Donald Trump. China. I try to clean up my language, okay? But yes, that's exactly what we did. And uh, and I was in Bassett yesterday making a speech. By the way, uh, we have closed some factories. I don't suggest that the factories didn't have to be closed. We just didn't have to close all of them. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about the Chinese, John, when you challenged them uh, as competitors and in terms of the rules of trade with China right now? Well, at the end of the day, what was your takeaway from all that? In 1984, I was in China. This was when it was first starting. I was meeting uh, with a senior Chinese uh, manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was ta Taiwanese, and he invited me a couple of days later to have dinner in, in Hong Kong at the Pen Peninsula Hotel. And he, he was not intoxicated, but he got one too many drinks. And he, he didn't speak English, so we had an interpreter. And he kept telling something to the interpreter, and she would not interpret. And he finally said, tell the man. I said, tell me. He told me two things I never forgot. He said, you, we've done business with everybody in the world, but we have never met greed like it is in America. You are the greediest people we have ever met, and we know it. Wow. And the second thing he told me was, when we get on top, don't expect us to be so dumb to do for you what you are so dumb to do for us. Wow. We are naive. America, wake, wake up. If you think everybody else in the world goes by the same rules we go by, mm. there's a bridge here in Brooklyn I won't talk to you <laughs> about buying, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wake up. Now, we've got to compete, but let's not be naive. So what do we do then? I mean, this whole <clears> idea <throat> that Donald Trump has been talking about, foreigners coming in, immigration needs to be changed because they're taking American jobs. That's why we're seeing so many jobs being cut. Do you agree with that? How do you, uh, how do you create growth but also ensure that jobs are going to be created? Excellent question. Number one, we believe in education. We believe in entrepreneurship. We believe in innovation. We believe in what everybody else says. What a lot of companies have forgotten is they only look at what the CFO tells them in the figures. Mm. It is time we talk to our people again in these factories. They want to be a part of this. This is the middle class that Donald Trump has tapped into, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And it is big. Right. Talk to your people. They want to be part of this competition, and they can change those numbers in a CFO's so, office. John, if you were to speak directly to Donald Trump, whom I hope will be President Trump uh, before <laughs> very long, what would you tell him needs to change to allow your firm to grow? What, what is government doing that is in the way, that is a hurdle to Bassett's growth? <laughs> well, very simply, I mean, he wants to build walls and all this type of thing. Look, 
enforce the laws that are already there. Mm. I mean, we went through Annie Dumpet. What it cost us to do this. Guys, you can't ask industries to spend $50 million on a lawsuit. Yeah. Come on, enforce the law. That, do you know in anti dumping since 2003 to 2014, the Chinese have imposed more anti dumping on the rest of the WTO than we have? That's remarkable. Yeah, that wow. But they called me a protectionist. Right. Well, right. you've got you've got the you got the foreign <laughs> problem, and you know the American needs to follow the laws. But then you've got the technology problem, right? I mean, absolutely. How, that's the next issue that people are dealing with right now: robotics. That's taking jobs as well. No, no question, and, and you're not going to stop that, guys. I mean, but <clears throat> we have to be innovative. But you have to work hard, and we have a wonderful workforce. Don't turn your back on them. Mm. They want to be part of this. You're not city. a protectionist. You're a great American, John. Well, I love yes, America. Yes, you are exactly, John. Great to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much, John Bassett the Third. There.